The wide open plains of Africa feature an abundant diversity of wildlife, including those larger animals that used to fall prey to the hunter's rifle. These plains are often characterized by their big game. But the lifestyles of the smaller animals here are no less intriguing than those of the larger inhabitants. These are the little game of the plains. Itosha National Park in Namibia lies within the vast savanna of southern Africa, which includes the Kalahari Desert. Ground squirrels are common on the open plains where they live in family groups. These rodents feed on plants, seeds and occasionally insects. Soon after sunrise, Ground squirrels leave their underground burrows to start feeding and also grooming their young. Often inhabiting the same burrow system as the ground squirrel is the yellow mongoose. A typical yellow mongoose family consists of two parents and their offspring. The young were born several weeks ago in the family burrow. They're now old enough to venture outside. Usually, a parent will oversee these outings. An abdim stork preens itself close to their den. It takes very little to prompt the family back into the safety of the burrow. The other parent is foraging for insects, reptiles, birds' eggs and nestlings. Scorpions are also prey, but the yellow mongoose must first confront its venomous sting. The foraging yellow mongoose provides food for the rest of its family. When it returns from hunting on the plains, it's carrying the remains of a lizard. The young aren't fully weaned yet, but the parents start to offer food in preparation for their offspring's progression from milk to meat. Although ground squirrels and yellow mongooses often share the same system of burrows, each species occupies its own area.
the two species coexist peacefully since there's no competition for food. An advantage of sharing a burrow with many other individuals is that this arrangement offers a greater chance of predators being seen and the alarm raised. The yellow mongoose family is moving to another part of the burrow. The young are still vulnerable to predators and relocating to another site may lessen the chances of them being discovered. Moving also avoids the build-up of parasites in the burrow. While the female transports the young, the male watches for any signs of predators. Sometimes one is successfully moved, but then it quickly returns through the underground passages to its previous home. As a black kite flies over, one of the baby mongooses appears in the original burrow. The female swiftly retrieves it. Named for their distinct markings, banded mongooses live in packs and are omnivorous, finding most of their food under stones and leaves. Banded mongooses have been observed on several occasions, actually rescuing one of their number from a predator. As a pack, they can work efficiently to drive potential threats away from their den. One such threat is the ratel or honey badger. It will eat almost anything it finds on its hunting trips. The honey badger is known to be aggressive and, if necessary, it will attack animals much larger than itself. It's for this reason that jackals instinctively move away. The yellow mongoose parent grooms each of its young in turn. This helps to keep their fur free from parasites. The calm of this routine activity may be interrupted in several ways. a large python uncoils to go hunting. The male mongoose stays close to the snake, which is moving slowly towards his family burrow. The python is too slow to catch an adult mongoose, but it represents a significant threat to the young.
the mongoose's alarm calls have attracted his mate. Together, they'll attempt to force the snake away from their burrow, if they can find it. Having evaded its escort, the python moves into a burrow. Fortunately for the mongooses, it's an empty one. But the predator is now about to become potential prey itself. The honey badger will tackle a python regardless of the snake's size. The honey badger has chewed off the tail first, but will stay until it's finished eating the whole snake. A rare and extraordinary looking animal roams in the open woodlands of Itosha National Park. It's a pangolin, or scaly anteater. The pangolin is equipped with an enormously long tongue that it uses to catch ants in their nests. Its body is covered in large, razor-sharp, overlapping scales, and they're its chief defense against enemies. This defense can deter even Africa's most famous predator. When molested, the pangolin can turn into an armor-plated, impenetrable ball. Any attempt to bite into this ball will result in badly cut jaws from the sharp scales. Another termite-eating mammal lives on the plains. This is the aardwolf. It also varies its diet to include eggs, small rodents and reptiles. It's a solitary predator, except when raising young. Primarily nocturnal, the aardwolf is a very nervous creature and won't emerge from its underground home until it's sure of its safety. Its eventual and rapid departure is thought to be another safety measure in the event of there being any predators hidden near its den. The aardwolf resembles a striped hyena but is much smaller. It also lacks the strong bite of hyenas. Feeding almost exclusively on termites, it has no need for bone-crushing strength in its jaws.
The Art Wolf patrols well-defined territories, which it maintains by using special latrines as a way of signifying its ownership to others. Art wolves are sometimes found in pairs and family groups. Raising its mane and fluffing out its tail makes the art wolf look bigger to a potential enemy. The art wolf's dorsal mane of hair is evident from an early age. The young emerge from the safety of the burrow in which they were born several weeks ago. Now they're beginning to explore their surroundings. It's very rare to see an Ardwolf family in the daytime, but in the early morning and late afternoon, a mother sometimes suckles her pups at the entrance of their den. These youngsters belong to another family of termite eaters, bat-eared foxes. The six-week-old cubs still have their fluffy baby coats. They've already emerged from underground to familiarize themselves with their surroundings. Living close by is the yellow mongoose. Mongooses and bat-eared foxes sometimes compete for the same burrows. The parent fox is trying to pinpoint termites by listening for their movements underground with its large ears, but it's being distracted. Despite the fox's threats, the mongoose stands its ground, so the fox returns to its hunting, usually a solitary activity. But the mongoose still proves enough of a distraction for the fox to abandon its search for food. When a jackal passes too close to the den, the foxes are instantly on the alert. The pups bolt underground, leaving the male bat-eared fox to deal with the intruder. When rearing cubs, the family may change dens several times to reduce the chance of predators finding their young. But hyenas and jackals are persistent threats. 
In this litter, one cub has already disappeared and another is limping badly. It's likely that only one or two will survive. Smaller than the bat-eared fox is the cape fox. Cape foxes avoid the heat of the day by resting underground where it's cooler. When exposed to the sun, the large surface area of their ears allows them to lose excess body heat more rapidly. Like many of Itosha's smaller mammals, cape foxes are principally nocturnal. Their numbers have declined over the last 10 years in southern Africa, partly because they have the reputation as killers of livestock. In the Orange Free State alone, two to three thousand are killed every year by farmers protecting their livelihoods. The smaller mammals which inhabit the plains and woodlands of Africa lead lives just as remarkable as their larger neighbours. They're not so easily seen for a number of reasons. Their size, the fact that they live mostly underground, and like the aardwolf, they're usually only active at night. Africa's more famous elephants and lions are certainly impressive, but there's also a wealth of smaller inhabitants. In national parks like Etosha, famous for its big game animals, it's well worth observing the complex dramas of Africa's little game.